Well, hello, hello, everyone. So glad to see you here. Welcome to this workshop. Um, and I also, as a parent, would just generally feel pretty overwhelmed. Um, during COVID, I, you know, my daughter was virtual schooling, so I would be listening out to see if she was actually on her screen. I was delivering food to her door and trying to stay on top of work, passing by the kitchen, seeing the dishes were dirty. It was just all at the same time. So I didn't um, know what to prioritize. And I'm sure everybody can relate here. Olga is a life and career coach and knows how to get through. She actually even gave me my own session. So it helped me a lot. And I hope she can provide some help. This is gonna be interactive. You'll get to meet each other, which I think will be nice since we've all been locked up. Uh, over. Well, awesome, awesome. Really, really happy to see you all here today. And it's really going to be a fun, fun conversation. It's going to be scary. It's going to be emotional. It's going to be all over the place because we're stepping into a very sensitive place. But I would like us all to allow ourselves to have those 90 minutes of conversation with yourself um, and explore explore what's possible. There's no way we can obviously shift life in 90 minutes. It's a process that takes weeks and months and it has multiple components and it needs to go slow so we can rewire how we've been and what we want to become. But it is an invitation to open this conversation at least. My idea today is to bring you some frameworks that will guide us through. We will have lots of chat conversations going through. So please communicate. You can open your cameras if you want. You also will have an opportunity to do some work because it's only when you start integrating those things and really having a conversation with self that, that makes the actual shift in, in everything in life. It's not about what we know, it's doing what we know. And we also will have small breakout rooms where you will have an opportunity to connect with other people and share because when we vocalize, make it real, put this into language and share, it becomes much more tangible and that becomes much more manageable as a result of that. So we would like to welcome you here and share a little bit of why I'm talking to you. I am um, in a career, multiple careers, and like many of us, we're multi-passionate people. I have five children, ages from nine all the way to 25 degrees and certificates by now professional, including several graduate degrees. I'm an entrepreneur. I work in corruption investigations and investment projects. And the point is, I'm trying to show you the big mosaic of life, that we all carry so many hats and so many versions of self. And we want those versions of self to express who we are. And then there is a result of wanting so much, we often end up overwhelmed, burned out, and actually collapsing back into each other. <laughs> and if you do feel like <laughs> that's okay, for 90 minutes, we're okay. We're gonna get you out in the happy place in the end of the workshop, I promise. So you see this beautiful picture, right? What is the feeling that you get as a result of seeing that? How many can resonate with the emotion that you kind of probably see it right here? Totally resonates. Okay, let's, let's do numbers. Like on one to 10, can relate, feel seen. Okay, so let's just bring in different, different concepts, who you are. Just start listing who you are. And I will start with myself while you're typing in. I am a mother, I am a spouse, I'm a partner, I'm a money maker, I'm an entrepreneurial uh, spirit, I am a career person, I'm a life coach, I'm a wellness coach, I'm a career coach, um, I am an adventurer, I am the mindset wellness. Keep running your own descriptions. I am, put it in a chat, put it in a chat. I am and then just start connecting to yourself. How many personalities, how many hats are you running through on a daily basis? I am an adventurer, I'm a dancer, I'm a performer, I'm a singer, keep going. It's my story, what's your story? I'd like to see that you are going right now. A mother, a dancer, writer, life partner, sister, friend, nurse, I'm a cook. Mom, dad, 
parent, professional, mentor, leader, adventurer, life designer, life book writer. <laughs> um, I'm endless opportunities of becoming whoever I want, whenever I want, at my decision. I'm a creator. I am the co-creator of life. Communication officer, fighter, daughter, corruption investigator here, cook, advisor, leader. Just notice how every time you say something, I am, there's a little of energy that comes around that moment, right? And you can start feeling that this energy is somatic communication with your nervous system immediately creates the mini sculptures of how you start feeling, perceiving your reality. So when you say, I am a manager, feel that feeling, or I am a secretary, or I am an assistant, feel this feeling versus I am a bull of energy. I am the life adventurer. I'm a creator for universes, which we are because we have kids and that's the universes we create. Notice the energetic differences and let's just kind of open up this whole communication between not just your intellectual intelligence, but your body intelligence, your somatic intelligence, your spiritual intelligence, and your emotional intelligence, just to name a few out of nine that we could activate, right? Okay. And the reality of life, the way we kind of see it for most of us, unfortunately, is sort of close to this, right? That's kind of all of those I am's trying to make sense out of a day, right? Does it feel familiar? Does it make sense? So now let's try to do what they say we should do, such as focus. Focus on the task, have a focus. Pick the color, associate with one thing, like, I don't know, I'll take red is my kid. I'm a parent, I'm red. And then just focus on one color for, let's say, 10 seconds. Keep focusing. Karina, you're not focusing. <laughs> Keep focusing, stay engaged. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking at my other screen, which is where I see. <laughs> Don't get distracted. Keep focusing because you know you should be focusing, right? Are you focused? Keep focusing. Do you feel like energy of yeah, anxiety is coming up in the moment? Right? Because this is what we're doing for 10 seconds. Imagine that we need to do the same thing on the task of work or on the task that we're trying to do while we're also doing this for 16 hours a day, right? So what is the feeling that you feel when you look at this and you recognize that actually, yes, it does look like my life because this is many tiny, super tiny tasks, micro tasks that are consistently overwhelm every single moment of our existence. If resonate, say yes, resonate, resonate, yes, that's me. If it's not you, say no, it's not me, I totally fine, I have no problem. <laughs> that is like your way of simultaneously talk. What I want you to see is how common this experience is, how everyone feels that, how it's not your fault, how we're together in this experience, and how we can connect through this experience so we can rewire it and do it differently. Okay, so now let's move into your definition of life, right? If life would have been translated into something you want to see, like my definition of life, I put it for you so we can start playing with that. I don't want that, that moment. I want legacy, impact, freedom, and energy. I want love, inspiration, fun, empathy, laughter, innovation, fantastic, extraordinary. What will be your definition of life if you wanted to describe it as you want it? Like what is that would make you ideally happy with your life? What is life for you? L-I-F-E. Let's play. Let's pretend that we're five-year-olds who have still dreams and imaginations. <laughs> and become creative. So let's play with that. Take a second and let me know in the chat, how would you play with the word life? L-I-F-E. Legacy, inspiration, freedom, and energy resonated with Feruza. Awesome. Quality time with family, time to do things I enjoy. So I hear joy. Love, play, lean, inspiration, feel, enable, or enabling, right? That's also very fun things. Leave life. 
Awesome. Laura, um, love, inspiration, freedom, empathy. This is just the simple example. Start playing with what it could be if we decide to. Fun, empathy, family, extraordinary, resonating with some people, right? Fantastic. So in reality, though, this is how we experience life. This is how we fight this experience, trying to escape into something that gives us some sort of buffer between the, this frustration that we have and the experiences that we have. And the worst thing of all, that we also create the model for our children to follow. That is the place that we really want to start having some strengths for ourselves. How to start reorganizing our life so they are not getting comfortable in the same squirrel wheel and instead have an opportunity to design the life that we want. So one zoom out would be, yes, there's lots of things we have to do, but we have to stay in the leadership of them who are watching us, right? So how many of you saw your mother or father struggling 20 years ago? Just say yes, if, if it was yours, no, if it wasn't. How many of you observed your mother sacrificing something, your father sacrificing something, their relationships not being the best, um, wonderful, because they, because they were trying to make you have successful and happy, right? And today, how many of you recognize that you're repeating the same exact model? How many of us are leaving the same as we saw our parents doing back then, right? But the point is that the kids are watching us and we're doing all of this for them, right? Yes, yes. But guess what? It's probably was exactly the same with your parents and now look what we're creating. We're recreating the same exact thing because we're coming from the same exact positions, right? So what could it be different? What is the difference from the checkbox life? Something that we don't have to repeat for ourselves and understanding where it's coming from so we can understand that. And I can tell you that it's not an easy conversation and it's not in our consciousness either until something hits us strongly. It's like being stuck on the accelerator pedal all the time until we hit the wall. And there's always a wall and each person will get that wall one way or another, whether there's gonna be an affair, a divorce, a broken relationship, I don't know, the kid's suicide, some sort of diagnosis. I know it sounds scary, but the point is, if you keep going through this trajectory, there is going to be a breaking point, whatever it may look like. And for me, unfortunately, that breaking point came kind of in the form of my fifth son, which led us to gazillions of dollars spent in the hospital bills. Um, 15 days of NICU that cost an amazing amount of money. My own surgeries, my four days coma, my, my six blood transfusions, and then two years of endless physical therapy, occupational therapy, child development experts, woman resilience expertise, relationship recovery expertise, because we wrecked relationships between me and my husband, we wrecked it with our kids. And it was a longest period of recovery ever. But the worst thing that happened is when we finally did recover and got to the place of getting him back to normal. It was this moment of, whew, we made it to normal. We got the final decision by doctors. And that anatomy, that normal was exactly what should have put me into that circle of hellish experience in the first place. Because that normal was that burnout culture, which had zero respect for myself, including me, myself, including people who loved me next to me, supporting me, my husband, my children, my family, whatever, including employees, including bosses. No one wished us bad. <laughs> and yet we don't pay attention to how we feel. We don't take care of ourselves. And then we show up for others. And then th these outcomes of those decisions do come. And so that made me question what is the normal and how we shift it. And that was the moment when I went from a corporate place into the coaching because I realized that's just not enough to get back to normal. We need to shift that normal. We need to have those conversations. 
We need to have different framework of how we think, how we relate to our emotions, how we deal with our self-care, how we deal with children, how we deal with people around, what's the boundaries around, and how we actually get strength and empowerment to, to deal with them. And that's became a mission. So whatever I'm talking to you today comes from that painful experience I had with this fantastic boy who is perfectly fine now, but no one else needs to go through this breakdown in order for us to get a breakthrough. And so I would like us to have this moment and reflect a little bit on yourself. What is your motivation, that your intention that you came today for this conversation with yourself and people around you that you want to have as an outcome of the session? Go ahead and put it in the chat, please. What's your motivation? What's your intention? We can be entertaining ourselves. We came here for a reason. We invest in, into something. Not doing enough as a parent, professional, as an individual. Okay, so what would be the intention to learn how to feel enough, to have validation? What would be the intention? Have a new normal in my life when we can achieve dreams. So I hear that we want to have dreams and we have to have a normal structures around that make it possible for dreams to come true. To be more present for my kids, to be more present in life in general. To have a feeling of control. Sharing so I can see our conversation. Less striving, less um, hustle, more self-compassion, handle stress better. We'll be talking about stress. Balance in my mid-40s. So I teach balance for my kids too. Wonderful moment. I want to have balance and I want to learn to lead my kids into learning to be in balanced play. So there's components. More time, do things that are good for myself. So me, myself, time for myself, exercise, fitness, wellness, in the moment with my family. Awesome, awesome. So here's one thing that at the framework I would like us to play with. Take a piece of paper, and if you don't have it, you would need it today. <laughs> if there were three things that needed to happen in your life, those will be the three, three boxes. I want you to understand where you have the clarity or not. And if you don't, that's perfectly fine for now. What you then will find out that there is a white block, and I don't know how to feel it yet. The only decision you need to make, I'm willing to, willing to learn this. I'm willing to learn that. Your life vision is what we just started doing in the chat. So take a peek of what you want to focus on, whether it's kids, myself, I, whatever that may be. How clear are you on this life vision? What is the relationship? Why are you doing this? What is that for you? What do you want to have when the last moment of your life comes, looking back, and you can say, yep, there was no regrets because this, 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 and this, I want it and I did it. Do we have the clarity? How would you want your relationships to be? on the life vision. My life vision, my kids are independent. They are leaders, they're self, they're confident, they're clear, they're kind, they're compassionate. They care for the planet, for people, but they're not sacrificing anything. They're dreamers, they live life. I want to raise those kids. I want to have that future generation. That's my life vision as a parent, as a leader, and as a professional person, and as a person who wants to see the future being like that, right? That would be my little bullets. I want them to be joyful. I want to have joy in life. I want to do what I love. I never want to stop. I never want to retire because I want to share the love to what I do with the world, whatever that may be. That would be life vision. That would be my imagination. I want to have beautiful relationships. They're not sacrificed to career, work, money, kids, or anyone else. I may not have it now, but this is what I want. This is my dream. Um, wanting things for others. Okay, well, then it's a great place to start wanting things for yourself, right? Because when you are shining your light, you, you are living your gifts, you're living your dreams. That's what for others create light as well. It's like being the lighthouse in the darkness of the ocean and the storms. They will come to your light if you're shining this, but you need to learn to shine it bright. Or you can run around being in a safety boat and saving a boat at a time. Or you can be that 
lighthouse that shines the light of safety, love, and appreciation to thousands of boats simultaneously. It's a choice. It's always a choice. And today we're exploring those choices. If you are that shiny light, if you are the one who brings that joy to the universe, how does this translate into bringing joy and life and inspiration to your children? Would you say that it's going to make an impact on them? So would that be both I am joyful and happy and I am a greatest mom ever and I'm creating the dreams that come true, right? So there is a lose-win moment and then there is the end. It's not the either or, it's those two and more. And that's, are we clear on a little bit on vision? Do I have it? Do I not have it? Am I realizing, oh, it's all about others, not about me? Or do I really have a problem with saying my vision? What's the feeling? So would you love her to feed on her own energy? Learn how to generate her own energy. So it's not feeding off you because it makes the independence, but it's rather both of you have an energetic ability to generate as much as possible right? So there is a way, and if there would have been a way, would you want that? That's a question that we can ask, because there is a way. <laughs> the second piece of this is a powerful state. The powerful state is not necessarily to be constantly happy and joyful. It's to be in that intensive, intensive calm, calmness, it's being in a resilient place where you can see the emotions, experience them, and still stay in those emotions, making the decisions that are best for you. All right? If I can re 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 rephrase that, it's having the fear and moving forward anyway. It's realizing there is a problem and stepping in so I'm willing to figure out if there's a different way to live life, right? It's, I don't know yet, and I'm willing to see if there is a possibility for me to expand it, even when it's guilty, it's scary, it's uncomfortable, it's, uh, it's not best. It's the ability to decide and deal with emotions and build your resilience. It's not like you wake up one day or there is a breathing exercise you can do for five minutes and then transform yourself. It's not that. It's a process. It takes weeks. It takes months sometimes. But it's the place where you make a commitment to yourself that I'm going to learn not to be happy, but to be myself. All of it. All of it. The uncomfortable, uncomfortable feelings. Because these uncomfortable feelings is what make us run around and do things for others instead of staying strong in our empowerment. So the ability to not just be positive, but to be all of it, to be day and night. And I always ask the same question. How many stars can you see when it's bright light day? How many stars can you see during the day? Not zero. One. Yep, yeah, that's getting closer. The sun, right? Sun is the, is the star. We can see it. How many stars can you see when it's dark night? Billions. Billions. And the darker the night, the more stars you can see. The brilliance of stars is only coming through that tough, tougher times, the moments when it's, when it's darker, right? When we feel that it's not happening, that's the moment when we become the most resilient, the most powerful, the most capable. And so we will be going a little bit deeper into those darker moments today, but I would like you to stay in, like write it down that day and night, that you are going to be looking not just in the darkness, but you also will be looking at the stars shining for you all the time. And so when it gets tougher, we can flip it into what is the stars that we're taking forward with that. The 360, it's not just being happy. It's not either or, it's all of it. And we want to see it all because we can manage if we see it all. And when we're hiding from something, there's no way you can manage what you don't want to acknowledge or see in yourself. And the final piece is action plan, right? Whatever you're doing, you're doing something. Whether you're doing or not doing in action, it's also kind of an action plan. And so it's important to understand what are we doing and what else we could be doing instead, and then make decisions of how new decisions and actions more aligned 
less aligned with the values and that vision that we want to achieve in the end. Does that make sense? So we'll be kind of looking into what are we doing? How does it work for me? Yes, no, good. Should I take it forward or leave it behind in the chapter one of my life? And then the chapter two of my life, what is the declutter that I need to do? And what's the new things I need to do? And that's really as simple as that. There's something you do that leads to the outcome. If we change what we do, the outcomes will change. And that's a very, very simple conversation that we will be looking into today. There's always a spiral. We're always moving forward. Whatever we wanted when we were 10, we didn't want when we were 12 because we grew. That calls growth and development, right? So important things are consistently capping these four pieces inside your perception of life whenever you're talking about it. Whether it's relationship, relationship with your kids, your health, your decision on a career, your life, whatever that might be, there is a place where you no longer want to be. Whatever that might be, it no longer serves me. Maybe it did before, but I changed. Things changed. We, everything shifted. No longer works for me. Do I know what that is? And that will be the discussion today. We'll be diving into you. You will be discovering your own. I don't want this anymore. But then the important thing is realize that you actually can want something else. You are that worthy. <laughs> and you can decide what you want. And then you can go and get it. Many people get stuck in the place I don't want to, but there's nothing else I can do, right? Does it resonate with anyone? Just put yes in the, in the, if it resonates, it doesn't resonate. No, I always do exactly what I want. Do you recognize that there are things I don't want to do and I just keep doing them? Yes? What are they? Like roughly speaking, if we start talking about this. For me, it's taking on somebody else's uh, projects that are urgent for them, but it's not me takes me away from my kids because then there's guilt comes in and all horrible things <laughs> come with that. Okay, so procrastination, I see that, waiting until last minute to do anything. Okay, procrastination is a very clear indication that it's not your value or you don't know how to approach this. And that is one of those things that are so incredibly simple to flip because procrastination comes from our defensive reaction to something else. Awesome. So I want something instead will be an exercise that we'll be doing today. And then you need to make a decision that I actually will do it. That is the difference between it would be nice, but it's for someone else. And actually, I'm willing to learn how to, even if I don't know how yet and I don't understand how it's possible. But if there's someone in the universe that ever done this, raised five kids, built a business, did what she wanted to do, build careers, change careers, married, crack her marriage, repaired her marriage, cracked it again, repaired it again. And it's still kind of like together, you know, if someone can do this, then maybe I can too. There is something they know I'm willing to learn. That's the decision. You don't need to know. You need to be willing to learn. Does that resonate? No one but you can make this decision. No one but you. No one will come and say, here's the new boundaries for you. From now on, you can use them. No one will say, you know what? I think I used you for too long, for 43 last years. I decided that no longer need to use you. This won't happen. It's your decision. I decide that I'm worth enough to have my priorities. I decide I'm a divine creature of the universe. And I have my gifts that I want to live to the fullest. I don't know how yet I'm willing to learn, but no longer am I going to do nothing about this. That's a decision. Does it resonate? <laughs> and finally, we need to actually do it. How many of you know that you should be doing things and you're not doing this? Say me. Right? So there's a difference between even wanting and deciding and having action strategies or concepts, how to do it. And you cannot do this alone. You have to have new people around you. You have to have your people who are here right now next to you, mentors, guiders, whoever can help you to stay focused, to stay strong, especially when it gets hard and it will, because it's always a map, is always up and down. And during the downside, that's where it gets tough. That's where we quit. 
And we want to make sure that we understand that too. When it gets tough, it's okay. And you come back and you do it again anyway. The worst thing you can do is fall off the wagon and then roll in the mud, <laughs> complaining how awful it is and how stupid you are for falling off the wagon and how deeper is the puddle. Or you can get up and get back on the wagon. Does that resonate? The four steps? So if I can ask you in the chat, what is the toughest things like of those four pieces? Where do you think you are okay, where you are, where you're not okay? How, how does it resonate with you? Like working, not working. Are you clear on what's not working? Are you clear what you want instead? Or not clear? Deciding is your problem and going. All four might be your problem. I don't know what it is. It's for you to understand, oh, I'm here, but I'm here, okay. And here I'm not, and here I'm not. Oh, now I know what I need to be working on. It's not a judgment. It's for you to know where you need support. Deciding is hard. Overthinking is part of decision. It's part of like why you shouldn't be going. It's not allowing yourself to go. Um, limited of time. Okay, so there's an issue of strategy, how to go, right? And my family needs. So just get this clarity for yourself. I need to ask those questions for myself. Okay, so let's move forward. Very super quickly, no overthinking, literally highlights in a circle where you stand in each of those 10 categories of life. Health and self-care. What is the number? Like for me, it would be seven. It was nine and then it slided back to seven. Um, so let's put it numbers in. Health, six, seven, six, seven. Okay. Seven, awesome. Six, fantastic. Four, great. It's fantastic to know the number right? Whatever it is, I know where I'm starting from. I have this clarity now. On your mind, on your mental health, mental wellness, curiosity, ability to learn what you want, read books when you want, being curious, being fun. From that perspective, how is your mind situation? Mine is 10, 10 and a half. <laughs> I'm a supremely curious person and I absolutely prioritize this. I don't start my day until I read for an hour, period, in bed, waiting for everyone to wake up. But what's your number? Four, nine, 10. Awesome. Emotions, your emotional fitness. How does it feel? Joy, love, appreciation, gratitude would be the place in 10. Guilt, fear, insecurity, unworthiness would be kind of on a one scale and everything in between is fine. Five, six, eight. Okay. Six, awesome. Four, great work. Great work just connecting to yourself. Four, awesome. Great to know the numbers. Spirituality. That means I'm not alone. The universe is behind me. I am living in a friendliest place. Things happen for me every time, even if I don't see it. I have my values. I'm here to serve some biggest values. I have my purpose. I have my mission. I know my gifts. I'm living my gifts. Not having clarity, but leaving this. So I have clarity of what I want to do in life, but my reaction in life is uh, six, seven. I'm not realizing all of this. My self-realization is not 10, even though I have clarity on this. Okay, so we have high numbers. Awesome, personal growth. Do you feel like you're constantly growing? You have time for that. You have nice, right people around you, mentorship, everything that leads you forward. Eight, six, three, eight, seven, six, five. So we have the whole range. Relationships, um, like personal, like deep relationships. I would say love relationships. Nine, eight, okay. Eight, awesome, awesome. Uh, family, how are we in the family? Kids will fall into this, moms and dads will fall into this, siblings and all the beauty that comes with the family. <laughs> um, for me, it's like if there's a break. I would say relationship, I would say really high because my love relationship is what the most important for me. My kids and family sliding down to seven, not because I don't love them, but because there's just commotion, there's expectations, there's like eh, things that come with family, right? So it's okay to say to yourself, that with kids, I'm at seven. With my bigger family, 
three, two, that way. <laughs> that way. And at least I understand now the scope. And I'll tell you why it's important to recognize this different scale in literally a second. Let's go with business and career. How are you realizing yourself? How are you realizing your mission into the world? How much do we feel about? It's all about feeling. It's all about your perception. Yeah, so answering the question, how do we measure here how much we do, how we feel, how you feel. It's your, if your look into the life of regret or are you look into the life of, of fulfillment and, and purpose. Okay. Um, wealth and money. How we secure about this? You don't need to have millions of dollars to be happy. How this money, how this wealth brings you security and breathing space and peace and ease and flow. And it could be anything from $2,000 enough for me to 2 million is never enough, right? Um, and if you were to not necessarily have to work and trade your time for money, would that be still okay? It would be still nine and eight or would that be different? Right, so security is not slavery. That's like two different things. Security is when I'm okay and I'm doing what I love. Slavery is a little bit when I have to work all the time and then I can leave what's, what's left of it. Notice the drop when you change your perspective, right? Just notice the drop, like angles. And so that is closer to the number that I'm talking about is that lower one, because I'm talking about that security, not slavery necessarily. And overall life and wellness. How do you feel about your overall life and wellness? Eight, seven, eight. Okay, so we're living a good life. <laughs> fantastic, fantastic. Awesome. So notice that you will easily see that there is three components in it. There is one to four, whatever you rate, rate it low. This is the places where it really sucks lots of your energy. And that's the place where I call triage access. Like you immediately start focusing on this because you can flip this energy literally within from a few minutes to a couple of days to a couple of weeks. It's a very quick fix. If you focus on that, if not, it will continue to stay in trajectory. And I also want you to pay attention to nine to 10. Whatever you think is in this green zone is where you have some magic strategies and mindset that is likely not very clear to you. It's not conscious, but if it were to become conscious, it becomes the leverage that you can then use as an extra boost to help yourself through this. Does that make sense? Does this resonate? Yes? So what is that? And I will send you the slides. It's the exercise. Obviously, we, we work through this for like eight weeks through the same progress. But I will send you this for you to play with this when you have time. You don't have to do this now. The questions that you would ask is, what are the results I want? What are the actions that I'm taking right now? What are the questions I'm trying to answer? What are my thoughts? What's the energy? I will get you this worksheet and you can work through this. That's the place when you start recognizing the decoding of what got you into that red zone in the first place, because there is something that works, something that is me, and something that is not working. Whether you're talking about relationship with your kids, your time, self-care, et cetera. The green zone is kind of the same line of questions, but now we will start finding out what actually is the driver of success, confidence, and clarity that is 95% of the time goes absolutely unconscious to you as well. And the idea here is to make all of it conscious so you can then decide, oh, this needs to be detoxed and changed, decluttered, cleaned up. This needs to be optimized. And this is where I can source these resources in it. You're going to be four questions and then you're going to be breaking into small rooms and we're going to be talking about this. I know that we didn't get to like juicy, juicy stuff of learning new materials. We're trying to connect to the bigger frameworks that you can choose and see and zoom in, zoom out and start seeing, feeling and being able to connect with your emotions about this life. So what are your biggest fears right now? We all will have our unique stories. Every single one, there's no magic field. There's not one success formula. It's your formula that you have to design for yourself with your understanding of what my fears, that stops you usually. Frustrations, that's your emotional connections to others likely. And then there's some dreams and inspirations. Whatever that you're talking about, my kid, my career, my life, whatever is important to you. What's your biggest 
fears right now? Let's put them in the chat quickly so we can kind of go through, not even thinking. My biggest fear is to not realize my dreams, to take all my gifts with me to the grave, to not inspire my kids and create the same circle for them, um, to burn out somehow, even though I'm trying not to, um, to lose people I love to similar things that would have been preventive. That would be fears that I'm running, running out of time, not having enough time. What's your biggest frustrations? Touch less. I know that I'm frustrated not being able to do what I want, to say no to people that I know take in my time, and I'm still learning to do this. But that would be frustration level, right? Not enough, not having enough time. What is my greatest challenges? The challenge is how to tell, how to learn to tell no to my boss, how to say, um, how to get my daughter to get her job and get off my budget at this point, you know, enough of after college. Like that would be the challenges, the things we can do or events that if they happened, that would have been great. Um, challenge would be to learn how to have difficult conversation with my spouse, partner, child, teen, it doesn't matter. How to learn to stand in the difficult conversation and feel that I can handle them. That would be a challenge. And what's my dreams and desires? I want to work six hours a day, very productive, very focused. And after that, I want to have three hours with my family, fully focused on them, active. And then I want to have two hours a day for myself, doing whatever I want. And I want to have massages once a week. And I want to travel at least four to six times a year, internationally and to the ocean. That's what I want. Okay? So... With that, we're going to break you into small rooms. And what I'd like you to do is just go ahead and share. You will have two minutes each. You will have two to three people in the room. And I would like you to just share. Here's my biggest fears, frustrations, challenges, and my dreams and my desires. Or I don't know what they are, and that's the problem. That's number one. And number two, so far, this was what really got me thinking. Whatever we talked about, we talked about the four pieces of don't want, want, decide, go. We talked about vision, action, and emotional state, right? So the different frameworks. Anything that shifted your perspective lets you see something different, go ahead and share. We're not judging. We're not coaching. We're not responding. We're listening with compassion and respect. And then we flip. And then the second person talks. It's about sharing and listening with compassion and curiosity and understanding. Zero coaching, no help, no teaching how to change your life, no advice because it's absolutely unsolicited. Agreed? Any questions? It's like dark boxes. So it's hard to say what people think. Um... Never disconnect and it's the nature of my work. Okay, well, that's a challenge, right? How to learn to disconnect. So try to position this in a positive statement from the perspective, not like I don't want this, but I want to learn to disconnect. That's a positive statement. It's I want versus I don't want to be totally stressed. I want to be at peace. I don't want to be used. I want to be assertive. So try to think in that I want more than what I don't want. Make sense? Awesome. Thank you for you guys who get in the pictures and videos together. It's so nice to see you. Okay. Off we go into small rooms. If you want to stay, stay here. But two minutes each person, go share, meet each other. Awesome. 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 Welcome back. How was it? Okay. Did you like fun. it? Did you enjoy it? Yes. Short. Yes. Too short, exactly. Short. I know. I'm totally telling you, this is like yeah. literally 12 weeks compressed into 90 minutes. Yes, it's short. That's how powerful the conversations could be. And that's why you need space and time. So this is not like magic peel. It's it's a process of talking to yourself and others, right? So it's obviously very short version. Like join the, the sessions if you want to do this for real. But I want to bring Maria because she was kind of left alone. So she jumped back and we coached through a little bit. Uh, yes, we'll be sharing the presentation, Patricia. So Maria, if you can just jump in. And Maria came in with a very concise thanks. 
uh, fears was health, frustration was career, then it was um, frustration was right, not getting the right job tasks, and then it was I want to realize my potential. Sounds yes. great, right? <laughs> <laughs> Except it's totally unactionable. So we take in the same pyramid, remember these three things. Yes, you have the vision, you have to have the emotions, and you have to have an action. And so we're translating this into this pyramid. And so when we did talk about, Maria, what was the career, what was the first thing, the health? What exactly is that you want? Um, it's actually to become healthier, more fit and trim. And uh, the next step is exactly how is to, you said exercise, how many times a week? Three times for 30 minutes. So let me stop you for a second and then go break it down. So there was from, I want to be healthier. It went down to, I actually don't move much at all. In fact, she said, not at all. <laughs> and so the idea is like, oh, maybe the bullet number one is start moving. Mm -hmm. And then we went into how often, if you don't do it at all, you're not going to do the seven times a day. Impossible. One day a week will be good enough. Two will be great. Three, no, too much. Next week, maybe. But let's start with one or two. Mm -hmm. So we agreed on one and two. How long? 20 minutes? 20 minutes. 20 walking. minutes. Mm -hmm. And what do you like doing? Walking? Walking and maybe start yoga. And yoga. Perfect. When are you going to do this? Seven days a week. <laughs> Two or three times a week. And we will Specific start date. this weekend. Weekend means Saturday or Sunday? Uh, Friday, tomorrow. So Friday, you will do what? Walk? Walk, yes. Walk on Friday. And when are you going to do yoga? Uh, Sunday. What time? <laughs> Let's see. Afternoon at 1 o'clock. Afternoon means what? 1 o'clock? 2 o'clock? 1 o'clock. Okay. Now it goes into your calendar and you're blocking out your business hours. You're done. Now you have time. Deja vu, like a little date with yourself. Now it's an actionable space. So notice the vision became much more specific from being healthy and fit. I want to start walking and lose five pounds in the next three weeks, right? That would be like specific. And now here's my dates. This is my time. This is my calendar. And this is how I'm going to do this. And it's easy because it's only 20 minutes, right? Melissa, you have a question? Yes. Thank you. So this, that sounds great. Um, but when we're moms of, of little kids whose whose spouses also have stressful work, like I I could I could say something like that. But then the reality is, it's you know it's not going to happen. My kids are going to need something. My husband's going to be exhausted. Um, you know, my kids aren't sleeping well because of daylight savings time because they're tiny. So then. I won't get the sleep I need the night before, so then I'm not going to have the energy. So in the little, you know, maybe 30 minutes I can get, I won't be able to exercise. I mean, when you're a mom of, you know, a parent of little kids, like how do you make these things happen? Okay. Starts with the decision. Do you realize that if you spend 20 minutes on yourself, you will have a little bit more energy for them. You will be a little bit more, less reactive. You're going to be a little bit more loving. Would that serve them? Yes. So then the question becomes, and if you don't do this, you will be less of self for them. Right. So that's a decision I'm making. Oh, how do I become more? How do I become even mm. more for them? Mm. And that shifts. It doesn't shift the time. It shifts my decision ability. Oh, I need to find time. So write the question, Melissa, mm -hmm. and I'm going to ask you to respond to this question. So how can I find 10 minutes for myself today? That will be the new question because I already know that I want them to be, to be getting me better me. Right. So it's important that the question becomes not like, I can't find this, but how can I? Mm -hmm. So how can you, Melissa? I mean, after my kids go to bed, but then I'm exhausted. <laughs> but okay. I can find so, 10 minutes after my kids go to bed. 
Okay, so let's uh, find it right now. Get up. Are you seeing, standing? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, what? Sitting or standing? I, I, well, I, I was sitting. Okay, get up. Okay. Get up. Me too, okay. right? Everyone can yeah. join us. And for the rest of this conversation, you're just standing. Mm -hmm. Did you find time for exercise? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Right? right. It's that easy. <laughs> okay. it's a decision. I can't find time. Period. I just need to find it and think outside right. of the box. So now right. let's let's guys jump. Come on, let's go. <laughs> let's go. One, two, three, four. Fun, 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 fun. You exercising, aren't you? Yes. So you can keep jumping while I'm talking, and now you have in time. All right. Okay. okay. Thank you. you Do you clean up after your kids? Toys and uh, stuff. I mean the plate, the dinner plates, yeah. Dinner plates, you do? Yes. Okay. And then when you put the dinner plates, are they up or are they down? Where do you have your dinner plates? I mean, I wash them and then I put them in the dryer, you know, drying rack because our because our dishwasher is broken. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, so how about laundry, socks, whatever you guys do? What do you do? On the weekends? Okay, so whenever you do laundry, or plates, or whatever that might be, right, this is my plates, I'm taking one plate, and I'm going down, and I picked it up, and I put it down. Instead of doing 10 socks, I do uh -huh. one at a time. And guess what? Kids can play with you. How old are your kids? 16 months and three years. Okay, three year is a big person. I'm sorry. Three year is, <laughs> it's a, take, a caretaker. <laughs> they love helping. And I, the reason I know it because I have five <laughs> and they all were small one day and we didn't have nannies and we didn't have help. And the mm -hmm. helpers were them mm -hmm. because they learn as they go. They're your team members. They play with you. Now, mm -hmm. how much, and a question for all, put in the chat, how much time do you spend every day on some form of cleaning your house, washing dishes, or laundry, or sorting things out, or somehow householdy. Put in the chat. Not 24 hours. No, that's, that's not real. <laughs> you sleep. No, let's literally try to focus and think, because the point is you have no idea where you invest your time. That's, that's the problem. It's not that we don't have time. It's like we have zero management of our time strategies in place. So the very simple question, do you know how you spend your money? That's how you get your budget in place. Do you know how you spend your time? Similar question. So one hour, two to three hours, one hour, 45, 30 minutes, two to three hours, awesome. At least one, 30 minutes, awesome. Including cooking, fantastic. So we just found time for you, cut it in half. Right? Why? What will happen to you if your house burns out? What will happen to you? Like, open your mics. What will happen to you? What will happen to you? You're finished? No, you will survive. It's a house. It's not you. I have to get a new house. You will have to get a new house. Yeah, you will get your insurance money. It will be inconvenient. You will have to, like, rent, right? You will have to move with your neighbors, with your family you will kind of need to do something, but you will be fine eventually. There's a different house for you. What will be to your kids when the house burns out, by the way? Will they be fine? Mm -hmm. yes, yeah? They'll be fine. Okay. And then you have your car and it broke, and broke down and there's no more car and dishes all broken. So there's no one, like you can't really wash dishes. You will buy another one. Now your body is the house temple for your soul. What will happen to you when your body, your house, burns down? Will you move into somebody else's body for a visit? You're done. You're done. And what will happen to your kids when you're done? What will happen to your kids when you are done? They're done too, emotionally, right? And yet, look up there in the chat. We all found from 30 minutes to three hours a day, 
to take care of the house we can replace. And then we have excuses to say we don't have time for us, the only house that cannot be replaced ever, neither for us nor for the kids. Now take that time block that you decided you have, we already have, you already have, and cut it at least in half. What will happen if the dishes are not washed today? What will happen? You will wake up tomorrow and those dishes will be waiting for you anyway, no big deal. What would happen if you find a teenager next door who is desperately needing money so they can buy things, pay them $10, help them build their dreams, put the college tuition, buy friends to their beloved mom for the Mother's Day, and help you so you don't have to do this being the professional you are, right? What would happen if you give this to your three-year-olds and four-year-olds? Yeah, it will be a lot of puddles. We have mashed potatoes scratching from the floor <laughs> and ceiling. Eventually they learn. They stop breaking dishes and they become relatively good dishwashers. And twice a week you can even move into paper plates, big deal. And then you throw them away because you're more important than them. And sleep is more important because you're in sleep, your waste goes out of your cells so you can be more productive, more happy, more amazing, more wonderful as you're supposed to be. And that waste is more important than the waste of plates because you don't feel like it's not properly dressed for, I don't know who. They need your mom, love, energy, attention, and mentorship to learn to become independent, not a cook and a server to helicopter all over and teach them how to be helpless and dependent. That's the choice of perspective. Carla is so happy. She's like all over the place. Carla. I, I am happy. I, I, I'm laughing because it is true. It's like, I, I think it's like you're the mom, the cook, you know, it's like, hey, wake up, you know, it's class time. You know, it's like, oh my God, it's like a never ending. That's why at 9 p.m. you're like so done. <laughs> so what do you teach them when you cook? That yeah. a woman is a cook? A woman is a servant yeah. or the woman is the leader and the person who has inspirations and changes the world and dishes are kind of can't wait, right? Yeah. Or yeah. you guys can do dishes. In my family, kids start serving the tables. It's kids' job, serve the table since age like three and a half because that's when we had another kid. We have a two years apart between them. So the two-year-old was too little to be super helpful, but a four-year-old was in charge of the two-year-old and both of them were setting the table. They're now 25, 23, 21, living their life, being amazing women. Great, grateful, like you cannot imagine for being this passionate things because I had no time for that. I needed to do the big dance performance because we were fundraising for kids in Russia and Ukraine at that time. I'm sorry, mom is changing the world. You guys need to set the table. That's the message. Versus ah, my dreams are not important. Let me set the table for you and serve you. And by the way, I also want to be respected for who I am then respect yourself. You can buy help. <laughs> you can buy their help by loving them or doing this together. And it does take time. It's not like there's a magic pill and they become cooks. No, it takes time. And so the point is, do you spend time cooking or do you spend time teaching them to cook and learn how to so they can, right? Again, it's not like I can't, it's how can I? Put this question, how can I, because this is what I want. And what actions do I do now? Are they aligned with what I want? If yes, keep going. If not, nah. What actions will be more aligned? Not help them, maybe guide them, mentor them, but not do it for them because you make impossible to do things your way. So how many of you have an issue with being perfectionist? Yeah, any perfectionist? Just me and that's it? Everything must be done perfectly? Yeah, okay, so we're getting some yes. perfectionists here. Guess where this perfectionist is coming from? Remember those times back then, if you listen to your voice in your head, it's not your voice speaking. Who, whose voice is telling you how you're not good enough? Whatever you do, there is a better way, let me tell you how you should do next time. It's your teacher, it's your mom, it's your caregivers, someone did back then. 
because their standards were so high that there's no way there was a room for you to grow and catch up because of course, every time you did this being five, you never will match them being 35. How is it different what you're doing now again? Except now you're this 35. What are you doing to this five-year-old again? Repeating the pattern or re reimagining, recalibrating? That's a question you can start asking yourself, right? Perfectionism is not you. Perfectionism is a defense mechanism that prevents you from doing things because you know you never will do it good enough for someone else. And as long as I know that I need to make it perfect and you know that there's no such a thing as perfect, you kind of give yourself permission of not doing it. It's a form of protection mechanism from the criticism because you're not good enough and there is some guilt behind that. And it has nothing to do with your, your, your personality at all. Just like procrastination is not laziness. Indecisiveness is another mechanism. I don't know what to decide, so I'm not going to decide anything. It's a skill and it's a defense mechanism, right? Make sense? We're mindful of time and I want us to have some frameworks to get it a little bit more into that. I'm spoiling all the surprises. <laughs> But I want to take it slowly through this a little bit because I think this will be, if you can remember this formula and work with that, I mean, this is literally what we do for the next eight weeks in my group coaching because we're taking this like deeper through it. But overwhelm is when your challenges overrun your resources. That's all it is. It's your perception. And so let's go deep into this and quickly try to understand what are the challenges and what is the resources and what is the anatomy of that. So there's stressors. Whatever they are, it's your personal stress source. Whatever is stress for you is not stress for me and vice versa because there is a whole different reason why. And we could go deep, deep into this and it's really fun and interesting, but that will save you 15 years of psychotherapy if you go through this exercise and understand that, right? Then there's a perception. It's a lens we choose to or look through at the same place. So respect for someone who grew up in, I don't know, Anglo-Saxon, Northern European, whatever culture would be very different from the respect that the girl should show to the older man in, let's say, Asia. The perspectives are boxes. They are boxes. They come from cultural, family, societal experiences, the confirmation, and they come from your own interpretation of your own traumas of the past without revisiting them. Whatever you couldn't do when you were five, <laughs> you're taking the same five-year-old to drive your rest of your life, not realizing that you could revisit. You're a much more resourceful, powerful person right now than you were back then. But we never really revisit back. That's where this depression, anxiety comes from. And this is like years of psychotherapy, which can be transformed like that. You can rewire them like in minutes, right? And then there is how your relationship with change. Change is absolutely happening all the time. I will have a whole workshop on this on next Wednesday. Come and deal with that a little bit more if you want to. But change is happening all the time. A five-year-old may not be able to do much. But you treat your 15-year-old as a five-year-old very, very likely. Because it's what habitual looks like. It's where comfort zone it looks like, right? And so when 15-year-olds are still being awakened by moms and fed breakfast, <laughs> um, that is a problem because there's no way they can also take care of their finances. They cannot take care of their college decisions. We had a whole workshop on that a couple of weeks ago, and I think Karina can share the resources. Listen to that of leadership, of dealing with older teens. But notice that you always freeze them in that little tiny boy because it's for you, the comfort zone. I'm a mommy. They need me. I am lovable because I'm valuable. It's probably the only place I feel somewhat worthy enough, right? And we hold on to this, not for them, but for us. And there's a different way to fulfill yourself and release them from responsibility of taking care of your emotions. That will be another perspective. And so the challenges are basically your stressors multiplied by your perspective and multiplied by your relationship with change. On the resources side, we have energy, time, money, and support. 
and it goes into your physical, emotional, mental, spiritual kind of awareness, right? The energy is the place you can do something about. You can manage that. Support and how you view the support you can challenge. Money is a little bit less, but money can be used to buy help. And time is one thing you cannot manage at all. So let me give you an example. Let's take five seconds and make it into seven, okay? Or three, your choice. Just manage time, shift the time. Let's go. How many of you managed to make seven out of five? No. All you can do is manage your rules about time. It's like a bank account. You're not allowed to take money out unless I know where this money goes, right? You're not giving money to every stranger who asks for it. And there is something that needs to be coming in. That's what bank account is all about, right? Time is the same thing. If I give in my time out, let's, let's do the exercise. Here's your day. It's 1,000 minutes. Well, it's 24 hours. Let's, let's go. Like, show me your hands. Play with that. You need to sleep one third of this, eight hours, because without that, you're going to be very beachy and very, very, very not compassionate and definitely not focused and definitely not performing and nothing that you want to be. So sleep is the must, period. It's when your trash leaves your body and cells and makes you wonderful, right? Now you go to work. Figure out what your work hours are. Like this. And now you have dishwashing, grocery shopping. What else do you do? Laundry doing. Whatever you're doing. Whatever you're doing. Is this your life? Is that enough? Right? That is the time management. If you do eight things, hours of things together, which you love, it becomes your life. If you do things with your kids, it becomes time with the kids. So there is a way to deal with your time, but there's no way for you to change time. And you don't need to sleep eight hours. You need to sleep well. There's a difference in that, right? And I'll just basically tip it down to this place. So, Homework for you. What are your stressors in relation to bigger world? Things that are external. What are your stressors that happen in relationships with others? It's still external, but it's kind of people related. Whether it's work or life, it doesn't matter. And what is your inner me? And me for me means mind or mental and emotional wellness. That's what me means. If you decide that I don't want me time, it, translate this. I don't want any mental or emotional wellness at all, period. When you start naming things differently and playing with your little um, interpretations, it changes your perceptions, right? Make sense? Yes? So what is stress? Stress is your friend. Building a beautiful relationship with stress is the best thing you can decide to do and getting out the overwhelm, which is the things that happen when stress becomes unhealthy. Make sense? So let's take a little bit look into that. If you have no stress at all, it's boredom. And that's your teens, that's your kids who are kind of sitting in front of TV all the time. And then there is a place where you need to have stress in order to do anything. If you need to sneeze, you need to have some emotions. Stress is just your cocktail of things that the body produces per request. I need to do something. Oh, here you go. The problem becomes when it's strained and into crisis. And what we want to do is build this comfort zone. So I'll send this to you. You can play with that. You can literally go and circle pieces around. So you can understand where you are, where your kid is, where your spouse might be. It gives you some sort of framework of talking with yourself about that. But stress is a normal, simple body response for any demand of your energy other than sitting in that zo zone. It is a possibility of just wake up for any action, including the ones you want to do. And it's just a cocktail of things that happen. It's neurotransmitters and hormones doing something to generate energy because you ask for it, right? And so we need to be able to recognize when you're staying in that stress, then we find we can do, we can be super women and then we can go into 
relax and take care of yourself. It's a wave. It's always a wave and it's awareness. I'm great. I'm peak performer. Oh, no, I need some rest. And then you go and find help. Hey, husband, you know what? I need rest. I used to have uh, babies like back to back to back to back. We had this division. Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I wake up. Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday, you wake up. Sunday, we get someone hired. They wake up. Or we move out into motel and just sleep. Right? We had another, so with the third kid, we had a different distribution. He would wake up only for the two-year-old and four-year-old. I will wake up for the baby. If it's not the baby, I'm not waking up, period. <laughs> We're not getting up. It, it's a decision. And then you train your body to, to, to do exactly what you want. So your homework will be to run through those brain dump, dump your stressors, and then understand what you're dealing with, at least that much, what you can do about them. So. Perspectives, the second piece. We're not going to go through all of them, but I want you to see your perspectives. I must do it all. Anyone resonate with that? It's only me. It's me. It's I have to do. There's no other way. And it has to be it all. And it has to be perfect, by the way. <laughs> yeah. So I'm alone with my problems. There's no one coming to help. Resonates? Say yes if it resonates. I'm just like running through the messages that I'm getting from people that I work with, that I'm talking to. No matter what I do, I will disappoint someone anyway. It's just like it. That's life. Yes? No? Um, I never am enough. I'm never doing enough. It, there's always more to do. I must hide my juggling. I must hide my struggles. If they see it, uh, that's it. They will see I cannot be, I cannot do, I will lose my job. It's, it's not okay to show your vulnerability, right? I can't be seen as a bad performer. And if I'm not doing exactly what they ask me to do, then it's a bad performer and then it's a horrible thing, right? Um, I have no right to complain. Like my life is so great and cool. I should be grateful for what I have. I, like, there are people in Africa that don't. It's always somehow Africa and people under the bridge. I don't know why. <laughs> Very stereotypical, right? Um, I can't shut down my mind. It's always on because I'm the only one responsible. I never can be offline. Does it sound familiar? Yeah, that's a good question. What is a bad performer? The bad performer is a person who is unable to perform at all, maybe, right? Uh, but it's, it's your imagination of what it is. It's somebody else's box. So we're unaware of our energy cycles. Energy is never the same. It fluctuates every 90 minutes. There is a high achiever DNA. There is a particular way we are wired, and that's why we want to achieve so much. There are programs of culture, society, and family that run through you. The very easy way to get this is this little quick concept of when I was growing up, good mom was, finish the sentence. Finish the sentence. Oh, it was a mom who always was put together with the makeup, clothes, done, ready, laundry, whatever. Or my mom was the one who was flying to the moon and she was the biggest cosmonaut, you know. What was your definition of this? It's a program. It's not you. It's an old program that you're trying to ask Excel program to do PowerPoint presentations. Impossible. The programs of the past do not let you to find resources within you and make them rise up because you're not leaving that program that needs to be. Unrealistic expectations. When you were 25, you could do it all. At 35, you're doing so much more that each piece of this cannot be all. It will become 75% in each of them combined, maybe 400% of performance. But you cannot be competing with a full-time mom who is the PTA, I don't know, president <laughs> while running the job or competing with a woman who has no kids and can do the full-time job this way, right? It's realizing the pie and then feeling guilt, shame, self-blame all the time, which affects our decisions and actions. And this is not just you. Where this comes from, it's when you keep expecting that you will be continuously going, 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 but your body is saying like, nah, we're running out of gas. That's the space in that little place of like right here where the guilt, shame, and criticism and everything else leaves. And all you need to do is get yourself back, like relax, so you can get back to that space and go again. And so this is the place of ability instead of inability that we create ourselves. 
right? I'm not going to go through things, but please understand that there are some things that are your strengths that also your weaknesses at the same time. They fuel exactly the same thing. Like I thrive to do things, I love achieving, well, it becomes perpetual achievement. Needs to um, prove someone to someone else. As soon as I get next thing, then it's this mentality that is consistently showing up in framing how we position ourselves into consistently trying to solve problems for the universe, right? I will send this to you, circle things. This is me, this is me, this is me. And that will be quite fun for you to see and recognize that's not coming from you. It's coming from the culture and there's so many of us. So if I must do it all would be not true, then we can kind of argue this in different levels. It's not I who must do it all. It's not must, I can choose. It's not do it all, it's just maybe do something with it. And it's not it all. So who is on your team if it's not you who are doing it all? We just talked about this. Put in a chat, who comes in your mind? Do you have, I don't know, siblings, neighbors, friends, family members who can read to your kids from another continent? on Zoom for 10 minutes. <laughs> Kids, husbands, partners, teenagers next door, hired nannies, and where are your kids are your team? Can they set the table, wash the dishes, uh, sort their laundry things, pick up their toys? Or not? If I don't have must in my vocabulary, then I can choose to do this. I want to do this. I don't want to do this. I love doing this. I'm willing. I am excited. There's a way you can start talking about yourself. And if it's not that, then you have a right to say, no, I'm not doing this. Or well, I'm doing this halfway. It's not either or, it's just halfway. If I don't have to do it, I can mentor, I can lead, I can delegate to someone, including technology. That's what we're doing with laundry. Push the button. <laughs> Kids can load, you push the button. They can push the button. They don't need to do laundry. It's machine that does it. You can delay it. I'm not doing this today. Your report was important, I understand. I have time next week. And stay with the uncomfortable feeling, but they're called boundaries. Decline, I'm not doing this. I'm sorry, that's just, it's not in my priority. You can tolerate, you can accept certain things. And if it's not at all, it's only what is important to me. Remember that vision and the actions that are aligned. It's not aligned with the vision, then it might not be for you to do in the first place. It's not important to you. Does that resonate with you? Because the choices that you give them, again, you can read through them and circle if you want to. To be in the red zone, you give themselves this, or you can rest, recharge, and give them, people you love and lead, the better version of yourself, which is this. Same thing with kids. The homework would be run through this and just circle where you feel you more likely are and less likely. You will have this as your workshops. You can work, work worksheets. You can work through this. And then get and figure out how you're going to deal with what you're learning from that. Because ultimately, what you're doing, you're teaching them to do. And that's important. And your choice is really, really simple. We run our life with the dreams and ideas. And then reality kicks in. And there is this first initial feeling like, oh, it's grinding. It's not enough. It's something is not me, right? Familiar with that, with that feeling? And then you have two options. You can either start thinking this story that, oh my gosh, if I don't do this and they will have this and then I will do this. I will be like under the bridge naked and afraid. It's always end up under the bridge. <laughs> like always. Kids will be total criminals. I will be totally kicked out of work. No one will ever love me. That's a story that we can create and that creates our emotions. And then we have a result. We have, we set us for anxiety. Or we can say, okay, if I take 10 minutes off and do this exercise, will I be better for my kid? Yes. So my question is, how do I make it happen? Who can I ask to do, to delegate right now? 
and that will get you to a very different set of, of solutions as well. I'll also send you a couple things on how to work with this. So you have like quick triage situations. But an important thing for you to understand that you think you are this, like I did this in COVID when we had this first closure of schools. This is your parenting basically, right? But there's so many more people in the life of your child who are so important to them that not giving them a chance to rely on those people even more so robs them from the opportunity to get different mentors, different opportunities. They learn from doing things themselves, self-space from uh, interactive with uh, kids and, and older people, looking for help and assistance outside you, dealing with teachers and mentors that are here to help, the counselors, the parents of friends. There's so much opportunities to start seeing the whole pie of what my kid is doing. I'm not raising them alone. There is no single parent. There's a parent who happens to be in a single relationship. As a parent, you're never alone because kids are part of the team, grandparents are part of the team, partners, ex-husbands, ex-wives, neighbors, teachers, like gazillions, a pie of people are raising your children. And by the way, women in relationship often have the same feeling of being alone because we, 22 million of women left the workforce because of taking care of the kids. There is a village and it's your choice to see I am a hero because that's the place of comfort. I am finally valuable. Or I'm not alone because there's a whole village and it's a beautiful mosaic of mentors in the world. And every single mistake they make makes them more resilient and strong, right? It's a choice in your decision. How you start seeing the world. And then you go and stop being single if you don't want to be single. It's like unrelated items. It's a parenting and relation. I happen to be single in a romantic relationship, maybe. I know it's not an easy thing to hear and it's deeper when we go deeper into that emotionally, but that's a possibility. So the simple, quite quick things for you to play at home. Everything that is important right here on top, important to you, not to them, to you, according to your values, you either do now if it's really urgent, like my husband's surgery, we just discovered maybe he has a malignant thing, needs to be done now. Off goes everything, career, bosses, I don't care. I need him in my life because I plan to die in his loving arms when I'm 114, that's my plan. <laughs> and it's important now because cancers don't wait, right? That's a do now. Decide de de delay. It's when I'm not doing this now, but I'm doing this next month. And I put this in the schedule, right? Everything else is not me doing this. It's machine technology, others, neighbors, relatives, teenagers, neighbors. Or it's not going to happen. Not everything has to happen, period. It doesn't have to be sometimes. And learning this is a search of communication. It's not easy. It's emotionally charging. But it's learnable. It's a skill. It has nothing to do with you. It has everything to do with the skills that you decide to build, how to be assertive. The other exercise I'm going to leave you with is a life concept. You will recognize the same things. What do you do for yourself? What's important for you? What's important for people? What's in the vocational world important? And what's your purpose and values? Nothing that fits into this box goes into your to-do list. And if something missing, then it has to go into your to-do list. Like, oh, there's nothing for me that I'm self doing for myself. BMW stands for body, mind, and my world connection, my inspiration, my passion. It's coming from my course. So I apologize, I didn't explain it. But if I don't have something for myself every single day, this box is empty, yeah, something needs to go in. It is important for people, not cleaning them, but being with them 10 minutes, being with my kid. If it's not there, then we can add this. It can be five, 10 minutes of important conversation. And everything else that is not going into those things that are important to you goes into the no box. And then you develop a strategy, how you communicate. I'm sorry, but I won't be able to do this. Warmest regards. Bye-bye. And see what happens. 
people won't like it because it's easier for them that you do this than them do this. But you know what? Most of them will survive. The last piece you will receive also in that thing is a little homework. Decide what you want. Decide what you don't want to tolerate. Decide how you're going to think and what actions need to happen and run it through. What's not working? What do I want instead? What needs to be gone? Detox out of my life. Maybe it served me well back then, but no longer. I changed. Life changed. There are some things that could be decluttered and upgraded. Like I can kind of say no sometimes, but not always. Maybe I need to work on this on this a little bit. And then develop and grow new. Oh, I had no idea I can do this. Well, now I know that there is emotional fitness and I want to learn it. Sign up for courses, do it. And then the last box is your resource kind of scan, logistics. What do I need to learn? How I'm learning? What's my strategy on learning? It could be mentors, it could be friends, it could be books, it could be cocoa, which is, it could be whatever. But if you don't have a strategy, you're not learning. <laughs> What's the support that I'm not seeing? What is the accountability when it gets tough? How I'm going to be staying in line? And if you don't have it, then that we can talk about how to create that. Who I'm learning from, and it could be, again, the person who does it well. There's always someone who did it, and you can learn from them. And what is the time? energy and money investment I'm willing to do. We're sensitive about money, but we can completely forget about energy and time. Okay? Everything that is valuable, worthy, such as you, requires investment. What you invest is what you're going to get. What you see it is what you reap. It's like so many wisdoms. Whatever you put in is exactly what's going to grow up. You cannot plant like an acorn and expect the rose will blossom. You must value yourself first. Decide that you're worth the time because you're the only house for your tem temple for your soul, right? And then learn a different way of thinking. It's how we think. It's what we used to think as stressors and how we deal with change against how we position ourselves with resources. And the most important piece of information that I want you to leave you with, you will be always right. Whether you think you can or whether you think you cannot, where you think there is a way or no way, you are right. You are right because you will justify it for yourself and you will find the way to do it. So start backwards. This is what I want my life to end with no regret. This is the vision I have. This is where the feelings of who I am need to be, who I need to be in my life, have in my life, how relationships need to be with those people, children, whatever. I'm teaching them to be independent leaders or spoiled. Yeah, I met many of those kids in my life too. And then my actions that I choose to do, are they aligned? There's no way you can serve your kid like a servant and expect them to grow up being independent if they never tried anything. Uh, I hope it was helpful. All of these pieces you can try to work with. It's not easy to do alone, but you can. Um, I do work with people in a much longer setting. So if you're interested, reach out so I can see what questions I could answer, what was the most resonating with you. If And if you have any comments, any last moment aha <laughs> questions or responses, that would be lovely. And with that, I appreciate you coming here, but I would love to hear your responses. Karina, back to you. Thank you so much, Olga. I learned a lot. I hope everybody else did. And I loved that I could um, have a chance to meet, make some new friends. Um, this was co-sponsored by the SPIN group, the Single Parents Inclusion Network. If you find yourself in that same position and you want support, please do join us. Um, thank you, everybody.